Hey, what's going on? This is Dave. Welcome to another episode of Grilling with Dave. And tonight I'm just going to do burgers. Uh, I'm just going to do some burgers and some baked beans, and we're going to make french fries in the house. I've never tried french fries on a grill, but I'm sure I could do it. But tonight it's just going to be something simple. But one thing I wanted to show you is tonight I'm using Royal Oak Real Charcoal. These are just lump charcoal, lump pieces of burnt wood. As you can see right there, it's just lump pieces of, of wood that has been burnt and compressed at high temperatures, basically. Uh, I'm not quite sure how they make it, but this stuff is really good. What I'm going to do, I've got this thing piled high tonight. Probably don't need that much, but I want that much. <clears throat> now, what I use to get my grill going, I used to use newspaper. And uh, newspaper gets messy. So I bought these little things by Weber and no I'm this is not a sponsored uh, program I don't get sponsored by Weber even though I use their products quite a bit I bought these little things by Weber it's just a little square it looks like a little piece of wax uh, but it burns really good and this one little square right here will light my charcoal I got my handy dandy little neon green lighter and what I'm gonna do <clears throat> raise this up I got a couple loose pieces of charcoal underneath here, and that's okay. I mean, some of this loose charcoal when it fell out when I filled this up, and some of it is actually left over from the last time I cooked. And I'm gonna light this little block, and I'm gonna set that down on top of that, and you can already see the smoke rolling out from under it, and that's gonna get started and get cooking. And then I'm just gonna sit back with my cold beer and enjoy the grill get going and when we come back I'll have the burgers on or actually I'm gonna put the beans on first and when we come back I'm gonna have the beans on and uh, we'll get to cooking so I'll see you guys in a little bit Hey, what's happening? It's Dave. Just checking on the charcoal, seeing how it's coming along, and uh, it's coming along pretty nicely. And while I wait for the charcoal, I like to enjoy a nice cold, frosty beverage. And uh, name brand will remain disclosed. I'm not going to say anything. Unless some, some nice beer company out there would like to sponsor me, which I um, don't think that'll ever happen. But if they did, if if somebody out there was watching this from a nice nice local beer company nice american beer company i wouldn't mind a sponsor but anyway on a nice hot summer day out here while i'm grilling i i like to enjoy my frosty beverage and something that's been discussed uh, quite a few times in my years of being on social media is the idea of putting salt in your beer now I for one am one who likes to put salt in my beer and on a hot day like today there's a couple reasons number one I think it enhances the flavor and if you're like me and you want to save a few bucks and you buy a cheap beer you need to enhance that flavor number two it helps replenish the salts that you will sweat when it's 90 degrees outside and you have a 450 degree fire burning right underneath you so it will help replenish the salts in your body and it's quite refreshing so anyway that's my take on it uh, do whatever you want to do with your beer I do however do not recommend putting salt in an IPA I tried it and it's not very good in my opinion um, also, if you've ever tried, there's some beers out there that are flavored, and again, I'm not going to name any names, I'm not going to name a beer company, but there's one beer out there that is a pink lemonade flavored beer, steer clear from it, 
it's not really good even if you put salt in it it's not really good and if you have any of it wait till you drink about eight or nine of the normal beers that you normally drink uh, before you drink it because it's not good for taste just good for effect anyway all right guys i'll see you in a little bit we'll be back to put the beans on all right hey i'm back a little bit sooner than i thought i was going to be before i get the beans on first thing i got to do is i got to get this charcoal dumped so again i'm gonna grab my little they're act they are grilling gloves uh, but they look like welding gloves, but they are made for grilling. I bought them specifically in the aisle a few years ago uh, for grilling. And as you can see, they're, they're old, they're faded, they're worn, but they still serve the purpose. Let me, I say as you can see, I'm holding them down here. As you can see, they're old, they're faded, they're worn, but they still serve the purpose. And that purpose is not to scorch the hair off of my arms when I dump this charcoal. <clears throat> that and this little this little metal container right here, this chimney starter that I have, actually gets pretty hot. This temperature right now, this 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 grill, this right here, is probably around 400, 450, maybe even 500 degrees. It's very hot, very hot. So what I'm going to do. I'm gonna go ahead and dump this. Oh, and you can see that charcoal dust just fly right up out of there. Then I'll set this off to the side. If you use one of those, do not set that. If, if you're grilling on your deck, don't take that thing and set it down directly on your wooden deck because it will burn. You have to set that down on something that will not burn. I have a concrete pad over here. I'm, I'm on a concrete pad. It's my driveway. And I have a concrete pad over here by my porch, and I set it by my porch. You don't put it near anything that will catch fire because it will burn. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to move the charcoal around here. I don't need any kind of special pattern for grilling tonight. And when I say pattern, like cooking zones, stuff like that, I don't need anything special. I don't need a two-zone fire or or a snake is what they call it. There's, there's a, a snake process you can do. I'm just doing what most of you would do, and that is just spread that charcoal right on out, right out there. Now, if you bear with me here for a second, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna run in here to my garage, and I'm out of sight of the camera, but because of the wonders of technology and me using separate audio and video tracks you can still hear me here I come <clears throat> what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a few pieces because I'm gonna have to do the the potato or the, not the potatoes I'm gonna have to do the beans and I hadn't planned on doing beans but then my wife brought them out and said hey you wanna do these I said sure so I'm going to put a few pieces of this one here, and this will, this, this type of charcoal, unlike the charcoal that I showed you earlier, these briquettes, these briquettes right here, typically what most people cook with, typically, I use it quite a bit myself, they, if you're going to do a cook where you need it at a level steady temperature this is the best thing to, best things to cook with because they burn steady they they have a very steady temperature okay and they don't burn as hot the charcoal that I showed you before the lump charcoal burns a lot hotter uh, the the size of the charcoal is variable you have big pieces you have little pieces so the temperature variations are a lot different so if you're going to do a cook where you're going to you're going to smoke um, uh, some ribs or or uh, baby back ribs, you're going to smoke a pork loin or something. You're going to cook a turkey, and it's going to take you know hours and hours of cooking. The lump charcoal or the uh, the lump charcoal is not the way to go. The briquettes is the way to go, and you can use whatever briquettes you choose. All right, I'm going to go put these back in here. 
I'm walking here into the and then we'll come back out here you can use whatever you want to use whatever kind of charcoal whatever kind of name brand you want to use these just happen to be the name brands that I use as far as charcoal um, I really really like if I'm going to use lump charcoal uh, I will use the uh, the Royal Oak or there's another brand called um, Cowboy Charcoal uh, which is good if I'm going to use lump charcoal I prefer to stay with the Kingford it's a personal choice it's up to you now again what I'm going to do I'm going to put my lid up on here and I'm going to let this grill heat up and then once it heats up for a few minutes 10, 15, 20 minutes whatever I feel like it doesn't matter I just want to get the grate hot so that it burns off all the leftover gunk from the last cook that I did alright hey uh, I went in the house got my beans I got my beans on here now if you don't mind me grabbing the camera here real quick I'm gonna grab this camera and I'm gonna bring it over here and I'm just going to take this off and show you what I do with the beans there we go there we go I just put the beans in a bread pan metal bread pan and I put them on there and what they'll do they'll start cooking down and once I get them cooked down to the consistency that I want then I'll pull them off I like my beans to be thick and sticky okay my wife will put um, mustard and brown sugar in the beans that's all she puts in them and I like now of course a lot of people will put bacon on there I do have some bacon I could but I'm not gonna this is good uh, I just like to cook them down until they get uh, a nice sticky consistency uh, and then I'm good to go so anyway I'm going to cook my beans drink my beer and I will see you guys in a little bit hey alright welcome back what I'm gonna do here I'm gonna grab my little wooden spoon here this is a handmade wooden spoon my wife's uncle is on Etsy and he makes handmade spoons and bowls and stuff like that and uh, if you would be interested in any kind of wooden spoons like this uh, let me know and I'll send you a link to his Etsy account and uh, maybe you can help him out and purchase some stuff um, it's a very nice wooden spoon I like using it for my beans out here uh, namely because it's got a hole and I could put a little lanyard on it but it's just it's just a really nice spoon I'm gonna give my my beans a little stir they're getting good and done they're nice and hot they're edible right now I like to see them get a little bit thicker and they will but what I'm gonna do right now after I get that lid back on I'm gonna walk this way I'm gonna go right over here and with the magic of editing it's time for me to put these on these are my burgers so I'm gonna set my my grill grate down here the Weber grill is really nice. you can get the Weber grill with a hinge grate but if you don't have the grit the hinge grate it's got a hanger you just hang it down there now I'm just gonna take these burgers I got some nice big thick burgers here I like my burgers big and thick and juicy this is two pounds of burgers normally I can squeeze eight burgers out of two pounds but as you can tell I like to make them thick and big I like them juicy so I'm gonna set those burgers there I'm gonna put the cover back on now to help with cleanup of course I I let my burgers set out at room temperature for a while it helps uh, make a more even cook and I'm gonna set my timer before I forget on my watch for five minutes 
The grill is running right about 325, 350 degrees. I gotta let it build back up here. Once you take the lid off, the temperature goes down. But to help with cleanup, I put aluminum foil down on a, on a cookie sheet like this, and that's where I make my burgers at. And then what I'll do is I'll take the aluminum foil off, toss the aluminum foil, set this aside, and put my cooked burgers back on this. I don't have to take it back in and wash it and all that. So it makes it a lot easier, a lot quicker. So I'm going to go ahead and set this off to the side. Now I'm just going to let these burgers sit here. The grill is about 300 degrees right now. Once you, you put uh, some food on the grill, uh, the temperature will go down because the food is obviously colder, so the temperature's got to build back up. So temperature's running about 300. Five minutes, medium high heat basically, and uh, five minutes and I'll flip them and put my uh, cheese on it, and then uh, another five minutes and we'll be ready to eat. So I'm going to be eating here in about 10 minutes. I don't know what you guys are doing, but I'm going to be eating. All right, I'll be back in a little bit. All right. My timer is going off, which is telling me it's time to flip my burgers. So I'm going to go ahead and shut this timer off for a second. Now, before I flip the burgers, I'm going to go ahead and give my beans a stir. They've been on here for at least, I don't know, 30, 45 minutes, somewhere in there. Like I said, I never time them. I just cook them to where the consistency is where I want them. I grab my handy dandy little neon green flipper. I, you know, I don't know why everything I have is neon green. The lighter's neon green. This is neon green. Even my shoes are neon green. And my motorcycle's neon green. Apparently, I like neon green. So I'm gonna go ahead and flip my burgers. Flip them over there real nice. And, uh, a couple of them are falling apart. We don't like it when they fall apart. But they're still edible. that one smushed back together just a little bit I'll put my lid back on here for a second now you get your cheese I like to use sharp cheddar cheese this is a uh, just some packaged cheese that I bought at a local store here butchers Black Angus, Black Angus Butchers here in St. Albans, West Virginia. I like to purchase my meats and uh, my cheeses from them. I'm going to get the cheese opened up here. I'm going to set my lid off to the side. And then I'm going to add my cheese to the top of my burgers. Like so. Got two pieces of spare cheese. We'll save for a later time. Wrap them up as good as possible. All right. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to set my timer for another five minutes. And then we'll be back. I'll be ready to pull those off. All right. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to pull the hamburgers and the hot dogs off and I'm going to take them inside and I'm going to pull the baked beans off and I'm going to take them inside. We're going to pull these burgers off of here. And what I'll do, I'll just bring these over so you guys can kind of see what these look like. Nice charcoal burgers. And then what I'll do, I'm going to go ahead and 
pull these hot dogs off. Or wieners, as some people would call them. Wieners. The fun word to say. Wiener. I just like to roll them around on there. I know some people like to make them charcoal and black. Me, I prefer to make them roll them around and cook them evenly. Wow, this pan gets hot, man. All right, I'm going to go ahead and put that cover back on there. I'm going to take these in, and then I'm going to come back out and get the beans. Take these in and get the beans. We'll see you in a little bit. All right, so I got the hamburgers and the hot dogs in the house. Uh, they're in there, and uh, the family's getting ready to eat. I'm going to go ahead and pull these beans off. And I gotta get my gloves to put to, to carry them in because that pan is hot. And I'm gonna go inside to eat because I am hungry and I hope you are hungry too. And I hope these videos influence you to get out and do some more grilling outside in your backyard. All right? So for now, this is Dave and I hope you all have a good evening. Like this video click like it's down here click like okay and and leave a comment if you really like my video all right but but click like all right let me know that you like the videos all right they may be pointless they may be silly but just click like let me know right now do it do it right now click it